What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to get back a little more performance out of your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or 3A Plus by upping the thermal throttle limit on your Raspberry Pi using a very easy method. Before we get started here, I just want to go over this a little bit. But with the newer releases of Raspbian and even the upcoming version of RetroPie, our thermal throttle limit set on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the 3A Plus is going to be set at 60 degrees Celsius instead of the normal 70 degrees like it was on the Raspberry Pi 3. So when the soft temp limit is reached, which is set at 60 degrees Celsius with these newer releases, the clock speed of your CPU is going to be reduced from 1.4 gigahertz to 1.2. That's 200 megahertz right off the top there. There's a hard temp limit set with the Raspberry Pi CPU. It's 85 degrees Celsius. There's really nothing we can do to remove that, but I wouldn't want to run this at 85. I've been running my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with a limit of 73 degrees Celsius successfully for several months inside of my arcade cabinet. I haven't had any trouble with it whatsoever, but remember when increasing temperatures could shorten the lifespan of your Raspberry Pi, but it might be worth it if we're losing out on that 200 megahertz. We really don't have much to start with. Personally, I like to passively cool my Raspberry Pis. I don't really like a fan running in there. That's just more parts to break and more noise to make. But even with the flirt case inside of my cabinet, this still hits 60 degrees Celsius pretty quickly within about 15 minutes of playing around with it. If you're using a heatsink with a fan like this extreme cooling kit for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, chances are you're under that 60 degrees mark. But it really depends on where you have your Pi located. If it's inside of a cabinet in a closed space, you could still hit that 60 degrees with a fan on it. This is actually a newer kit that's available on Amazon right now. It does a great job, and I'll leave links in the description to this extreme cooling kit and my personal favorite, the Flirt Case. This is just the Cody edition. It comes blacked out. I love the look of this thing. So if you're ready to get a little bit of free performance out of your Raspberry Pi, let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to give you a little demonstration here. Okay, so I'm running the newest version of Raspbian. Now this is kind of an extreme test. This is just going to heat it up a lot quicker than it would if we were running RetroPie. But over time, running RetroPie with snaps playing in the background, it will hit 60 degrees, even with a passively cooled case. In the upper terminal window, I'm monitoring the CPU speed. We're at 1.4 gigahertz, and below that we have the CPU temperature. We've almost hit 60 degrees, and when we do, we'll see that frequency that is now sitting at 1.4 gigahertz, drop down to 1.2. And keep in mind, I am using the passively cooled flirt case. The whole case itself is an aluminum heat sink. And even with that much mass, we're still going to hit 60 here. And when we do, we'll see the CPU speed drop down to 1.2 and then hop right back up to 1.4. But over time, this thing's going to get so hot that it just can't go back up to 1.4. It'll be stuck at 1.2. We can change the soft temp limit all the way up to 85 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't recommend going that high. I usually set mine around 72 to 73. And to do this, all we need to do is add one line to the config.txt. Now, this is going to work with Raspbian or RetroPie. I've shut down my system. I've taken my SD card and I've placed it in a Windows-based PC. We want to find the partition on that SD card called boot. And inside of there, we're going to find config.txt. This is a text file that we can edit. But first, we want to download an application to safely edit this. This is Notepad++. It's easy to use. All links will be in the description. Go ahead, download this and install it. Now that we have Notepad++ installed, we're going to head over to that boot partition on the SD card. And inside of here, we want to find config. We're going to right click and edit with Notepad++. Once we have the config.txt open up in Notepad++, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Temp underscore soft underscore limit equals. I set mine around 72 to 73, but you can start out with 70 if you'd like to. Now all we need to do is save the file, move back over to the Raspberry Pi, and our temp limit has been raised from 60 to, let's just say, 70 degrees Celsius. So we'll go up to the top, File, Save. I'm going to close this window down, and all we need to do now is place this back in our Pi. I'm just going to run this one more time. As you can see, we're already at around 61 degrees, and we haven't throttled any at all. This is only going to throttle when I hit 73 degrees Celsius because that's what I set the soft temp at. I've been running mine in this flirt case with the soft temp limit set to 73 for months now, and I haven't run into any issues. But like I said in the beginning, 
There is a chance you could shorten the lifespan of your Raspberry Pi, but in the end, these are $35 single board computers made to tinker with. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.